Most of the time we speak without giving it so much as even a second thought. So can any of us even imagine what it'd be like to suddenly lose communication with the world, or even just those around us? I imagine it to be pretty frustrating, to be honest. As babies, we learn to communicate by making noise through crying, if we're hungry to get fed, or if we're too hot or cold to get attended to, for example. And this is a basic need for our survival as children. And over time, we learn that just crying has pretty obvious limitations as communication goes, and gradually learn your native language. And with only simple language, only simple ideas can be expressed. This doesn't mean that a language has to be complicated in order for it to serve its purpose. For an example, take the language indigenous of the Porajas of Amazonas in Brazil. Their language consists of only eight consonant sounds and three vowel sounds, so 11 sounds in total, depending on the gender of the speaker, for example. Take this in comparison to the 44 sounds of the English language, and it may seem impossible that we can communicate the same ideas. But both of these languages allow the speakers to connect with each other in the same way, regardless of the distinct situations, cultures, or ideas that need to be expressed between them. This is because words are created as a need for them arises, and then other words are lost along the way as they lose popularity. This forms identity across speakers of a certain language, and if a word already exists for a concept, it's a lot easier to explain. For example, a problem can only be talked about if language already exists to define it. As a light-hearted example of this, Kummerspeck is a German word that can be literally translated as grief bacon, which we can translate better to English, where it means the excess weight caused by overeating because of emotional problems or comfort eating. Now I'm sure this is just as relatable in our society as much as it is in any other, but because we don't have this word, we're naturally less likely to express this. But the English language is forever an example of taking words from other languages and using them in our own. With the development of the internet and easier travel, language may seem to be developing a lot quicker in recent years than it has in the past. And the closer we move to the idea of a global society, the greater a hindrance having a language barrier actually becomes. Language is no longer something isolated to a specific location or people. It's therefore much rather linked to cultural identity of a place and its speakers. And for example, while logos or other forms of expression such as body language or pieces of artwork prove that in a certain sense, the need for language can be defied, symbols generally being used as a general form for communication. But the symbolism of art and music are deeply rooted in the culture that they're made in, culture that we can only ever hope to understand and maybe even appreciate by communicating with those who are born into it, or those who have even taken the time to understand it before us. There's so many things, as we get older, we have the excuses of having no time or energy to put into them, but we will always have some level of curiosity, or even just pure nosiness about how others live their lives. And that curiosity never dies. It's never too late to feed into that curiosity, and maybe you'll learn something along the way.